So being the best and the most successful sports uh, practitioner you can be is the key. And um, ultimately with everything that I teach and everything that I have done, it is, the, it is trying to be the best that I can be. And uh, over the period of time that I've been learning and lecturing and uh, using my clinical skills, it's been all about how I can be the best that I can be. So this is pretty much what I want to impart on you. Uh, in the seminar, <clears throat> in the seminar, we'll have a wonderful opportunity to look the, uh, look at the theory and look at the practicality of what I teach. Uh, there'll be about 120, uh, actually, there might be about 150 to 170 people at this full day seminar. And uh, I, as I said, I'm, I'm just really excited by that. I'm really excited. I've got all the information uh, ready to go. My lecture materials ready to go. Uh, the workshop, which goes in a lot deeper, it uh, goes into a lot of the practical skills and it goes into a lot of um, how-to application. Uh, so going back to the theory, the how-to application, the um, practical side of things, the clinical hands-on skills, which are so vital in sports physiotherapy and for you to be a sports medicine uh, practitioner. Uh, all of that I'll be covering in the workshop. So let's run through this and I'll explain to you what's happening in the workshop. Um, I'll run through um, how I came about uh, starting the workshop. I'll run through uh, all the benefits you'll get, uh, the problems you might have now and how to overcome them and the things ultimately in the workshop on how to overcome those problems. So let's get started. So being the best that you can be, there's always challenges. Um, there's always uh, things that uh, can hold you back. Uh, I've listed here a fair few challenges that I have experienced myself over the course of um, over the course of my career. One of the major ones is the lack of awareness. Even in Australia, the percentage of the population that know what sports physios do is less than 5%. So, for example, if the general public in Australia, um, if someone is um, suffering from back pain or um, a hamstring problem or uh, a knee problem, they have a few places to go uh, without even considering what physio is. To give you an example, in Australia, uh, so someone suffering from back pain, the person might say, oh my goodness, my back is hurting, uh, I should go, <clears throat> I can go to my GP, I can go to my doctor, I can go to a massage therapist, I can go to um, an acupuncturist, and they have a wide world wide variety of people that they can go to. So ultimately the awareness of what we do, even in sports physio, it's quite low. When you consider people like dentists, the awareness for dentists is very close to 98, 99%. So if you say, oh my goodness, I've, I've got a tooth problem, uh, what should I do? The first thing you're gonna think of is, I'm going to the dentist to sort this out. So that is how big the awareness is. So lack of awareness, and even if you're qualified, even if you are very experienced, even if you have been in the game for 20, even 30 years, there are people who aren't aware of you. And that is the profession as a whole. So one of the challenges that I have faced in my career was, was certainly this, on how to be the best that I can be, the lack of awareness. 